الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, yesterday we had a tragic event that took place uh, An MP that goes by the name of Joe Cox was murdered and killed in broad daylight She was shot and stabbed and left to die as a result of her injuries in her constituency in the north of England um, and that, you know, is, is of course tragic because every life is, is sacred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to take the, li the life of one person unjustly is like you took the life of, whole of the whole of humanity. And to save a soul is like you saved the whole of humanity. Um, and of course people are talking about that and so on and so forth. But I wanted to discuss the issue from a different direction and angle and perspective. And that is from the double standards that were shown by the government and the media when this incident took place. What on earth am I talking about, brothers and sisters? Yesterday what took place was no doubt a terrorist act. It was an act of terrorism. A blatant act of terrorism. A person was murdered in the street. That person happened to be a government official. For a government official to get gunned down in broad daylight is not the kind of thing that happens in civilised countries, developed countries. That happens in Pakistan. That happens in Somalia, that happens back home, when in, in, in third world countries, where, where government officials get gunned down in the streets. But it happened here in the UK. And guess what? They didn't call it a terrorist incident. I'm like, it really mind boggles me. Why didn't you call it an act of terror? Instead, what did you do? You started, they started to make excuses for the person. They called him a crazed loner. And maybe he was mentally not sane. But if that was a Muslim, they would have wasted no time whatsoever in labelling him to be an Islamic terrorist extremist. Just like with the incident that took place in Woolwich, when it happened to be a Muslim who killed a person in the streets. Straight away, what did we hear? We heard Muslim extremism on the rise, Muslim killed so and so. And of course, like I said, that was an act of terrorism. It was wrong. It was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. But the person who did that, did it because he was motivated because of political motives. He was actually recorded on the crime scene saying this is because of your foreign policy. He didn't say this is because of the Quran. He didn't say because Allah told me this is because of your foreign policy. Because of what's going on in the war in Iraq and so on and so forth. The person is telling you this is because of politics. Yet you force and say this is because of Islam. Either way, put Islam and politics to the side, it was an act of terrorism. And you release laws and legislation. And, and people will, you know, like, like, as a result of it, Muslims, you know, like, like we, get, we get spied on by our GPs. They passed a law for our GPs to spy on us, for teachers to spy on our little kids in nursery. Boris Johnson, that comedian, actually said that toddlers, Toddlers, toddlers are at risk of being extremists. And in the nursery, we should be spying on toddlers to make sure they not become extremists. Me, I, was labelled as an extremist. Like, are you, are you joking? Me, I have a pink thobe. Do I look like an extremist in a pink thobe? My Quran is pink. Pink is my favourite colour. Am I really an extremist? And we countless times showed our position against the likes of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the rest and all of them. And we took vehement stances against these people. We referred to them as these people who have these uh, you know, khawarij tendencies to be the dogs of the hellfire, as the Prophet said, that they still put us in the same category. But when it happened to be a white Caucasian individual, who was motivated and inspired by right-wing fascist extremist tendencies such as Britain's First, they're quiet. Why don't we see legislation and laws being brought out about Britain's First? Why don't we see the rest of these things? Brothers and sisters, I can go on and give you countless examples of things like this that have happened, but it would, Allah, it would be boring. And with all due respect, it would be a waste of my breath. Oh Muslims, the reason why I am bringing all of this to your attention is so you can understand one very simple thing. That this demonization of the media, this oppression by means of unjust laws being passed against the Muslims, all of this that is happening to us back home in our countries and here in the West is something that will not stop. 
it will not stop if you carry on the way that you are carrying on. What do I mean by this? It makes no sense for us to start doing Twitter storms, protesting, voting, running petitions, trying to get involved in government and politics and voting and all of these other things. None of it's going to make a difference. That is what Muslims do straight away. What do you hear? Oh, it's so unfair. Look at the way that the media is going. Look at the way that there's double standards. I'm saying let it go. Let it go. I'm going to explain in a second. For those of you who are getting angry and uncomfortable, don't worry. I'm going to speak to you from the Quran. I don't speak for myself. I speak from the book of Allah. Be patient. But I'm trying to make you understand. Let it all go. Turn CNN off. Turn Fox News off. They're going to say what they've been saying for the last 16 years. Let them do what they've been doing for the last 16 years. You cannot stop it. We arranged a protest. 60,000 people came. To march for Palestine. 60,000 people came. And they never even put it on TV once. Well, like, that's embarrassing. Well, like, that's a joke. That's a joke. 60,000 Muslims from the UK gather in London. And they don't even air it on the news. As if to say, <laughs> But yet you keep trying. How many times have we done petitions, we get our 100,000 signatures, do they do anything? How many times have we got Muslim MPs involved and whatnot, has it, has it done anything? You voted how many times, did it do anything? Let it go. Let the politics go. Turn the TV off and open up the Book of Allah. Because guess what, the Book of Allah already told us this was going to happen. And it gave us the solution to our problems. And the solution to this problem is here in Ramadan. It's here in this month. In Surah Ali Imran, read with me, open up, open up, open, open up the Mus'haf. Go to Surah Ali Imran. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah said, قَدْ بَدَتِ الْبَغْضَاءُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ That the hatred and the anger that they have for you, the vehement hatred and anger that they have from you, is become apparent from their mouths. وَمَا تُخْفِي صُدُورُهُمْ أَكْبَرُ And that which they've hidden inside their chest for you is worse. Look what they say, oh Islam, Islamic threat, we need to get Islam out, do this, do that, say all these things that they say on the TV and the news. They're not shy. Before it was radical extremists, radical fundamentalists. Now what did they say? Islamists. Islamists. They painting every Muslim to be a criminal. Look at that, they're showing you clearly from their mouth that they don't like you. And right after that, when Allah mentioned this, which is what we see. Is that not what we see today? The hatred for the Muslims has become clear. It's become clear. A Muslim does anything wrong, they try and paint him in the worst light. Something could happen that's not even connected to Islam. They will link it to Islam whichever way they can. Link it to Islam whichever way it is that they can. To the extent that when someone commits an act of terrorism who's not a Muslim, they won't even show it. Because terrorism apparently is exclusive for the Muslims. Only a Muslim can be a terrorist. The hatred and the anger towards Islam has become clear. Is this not what we see today? Yes. Right after Allah told you what we see today, what you see before yourself, Allah gave you the solution. Are you going to implement it? Are you going to argue? Because if you argue at the end of this video, you're Allah, you're arguing with Allah, you're not arguing with me. I don't care. It's not to me. It's Allah you're going against. What is the solution? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا If you are patient وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا If you come with taqwa I'm going to explain what this word means in a second Don't worry, taqwa, we're going to come to it I have to explain it Allah said وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا they're, they're plotting and they're planning and they're plotting and they're planning will not harm you, not even in the slightest. You will not be harmed by their plotting and their planning, not even the slightest. They turn off the news, turn it off, let them do what they want. Allah is saying, ignore it. But if you come with taqwa and, 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 and sabr, if you come with taqwa and patience, Whatever they do, any law that they pass, anything that they put on the news, it will not harm you. Allah wants you to focus on patience and He wants you to focus on taqwa. Now taqwa is what? I told you, I'm going to explain that word to you in a second. But we're in the month of Ramadan right now, right? 
right now we see we see blatant acts of racism and oppression happening to the Muslims, right? This is this, this is us. We live in this age, right? Ramadan came. Now we need to come with patience, right? We need to come with taqwa, right? What did Allah say about fasting? Allah said, Kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon Allah said fasting has been made obligatory on you, has been prescribed for you The same way fasting was prescribed for those who came before you Why was fasting prescribed? Allah says la'allakum tattaqoon Fasting was there so you can acquire taqwa So this taqwa and this patience that Allah wants you to come with that will protect you from the plotting and the planning of the enemies of this religion you will acquire it at the end of this month now taqwa is a word that is, is, is long to explain I made a video all about this word when it came to the month of Ramadan I made a video about this word when it came to the month of Ramadan just last week here's the link to the video click here if you can't click because you're on your phone go to the more information section watch that video right after this video so you can learn what taqwa really is because if you come with sabr and, which is patience and you come with taqwa Allah said, whatever they do, they won't harm you. They can't harm you because Allah is going to take care of you. So we want Allah to take care of us. We want Allah to honor us and defend us. Allah says, okay, but I want two things from you. I want you to do two things. It is what? Patience and taqwa. Patience and taqwa. Allah didn't say vote. The Prophet never voted, so I said, Allah didn't say do rallies. Allah didn't say do hold elections. Allah didn't say get involved in campaigns. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say protest. He didn't say do any of these things. Allah said be patient. Worship him. Come with taqwa. And this month of Ramadan, it's for that. Oh Muslims, if you really care about the condition of the Muslims around the world, in the West here, you really want to make a difference, be a person of patience, be a person of taqwa, Ramadan is here for you to make use of that. Because that is the reason Allah sent fasting. For taqwa. So how is, at the end of this month, if you do what Allah wants you to do, the situation of the Muslims will inshallah improve. If this month you acquire taqwa, and in this month you acquire patience, and, and fasting is about patience, and taqwa is why Ramadan is sent, and like I said, go back to that video, here's the link again, here's the link again, this video is about taqwa, you're going to learn taqwa, their plotting and their planning won't harm you. But if you insist on ignoring taqwa, ignoring patience, and focusing on what they say, and writing articles, newspapers, going on the media, going to the news, doing this, doing that, complaining, talking about David Cameron, leave David Cameron, let him do his thing. Let him live his life. He's, leave, leave them. Let them do their thing. That's them. We're concerned about Allah. Allah said, do these two things. Are you going to tell me, oh, what you got, you know, but you have to live in this world. You have to live in the 21st century. You have to know what's going on. And I'm telling you, no, I don't. I don't. Allah told me I don't. What I need to do and you need to do, patience and taqwa. And then if after you have acquired patience and taqwa, you want to turn the TV on and see what they're doing and talk about it and write an article or a post, do it. But you ain't even got taqwa and you don't have patience. I know, I'm sorry, I'm a bit annoyed, I'm a bit angry because Muslims, well, I don't get it. Well, I, you don't get it. You're oh, well, I, you don't get it. Anyways, with that said, inshallah, like the video, share it, subscribe it, send it around. I would humbly urge you and requ request from me, brothers and sisters, to study your religion. You don't have to take it from me. I am a, no one to take religion from. Take your religion from people of knowledge. Go to them, but just take it. If you don't have anyone who is a man of the sunnah or a woman of the sunnah to teach you your religion, then we have online the Muslim Survival Guide which is an online Islamic studies program that myself and the brothers who are on our team have put together. You can go to the link below, inshallah ta'ala, you can study with us online. You can learn what you need to, you can learn what you need to, you, you know, patience, taqwa, tawheed, sunnah, all these things. You learn it from this program, inshallah ta'ala. We have many brothers and sisters that are on board the program and they're learning and they're really benefiting. And what better time to start? Forgive me for my passion. Um, I don't mean to offend. But Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, did say, that, you know, sometimes you get a stain on your hand, you have to scrub it a bit hard. That harshness, it's not because you hate your hand, rather it's because you love it. That harshness is actually mercy, because you, you're merciful to your hand, that's why you want to clean it, you don't want it to be dirty. So sometimes mercy is harshness. And I just want you guys to understand. Like, well, like this Sadiq Khan guy, this Maya guy came, everyone got so excited. 
got so excited. And he started voting for him. This guy, this guy said areas where people were hijab and niqab is where is 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 places where extremism comes from. And those same hijabis are voting for him. Anyways, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.